What if I told you that you could have figured out aluminum sulfide's formula, Al2S3, in seconds as opposed to minutes by drawing the Lewis dot structure diagram? First, let's talk about ionic charges, then I'll show you the super shortcut rule. A neutral magnesium atom will have 12 protons and 12 electrons. However, according to rule number one, atoms are only stable if their valence shell is full. The magnesium nucleus could try to find six more electrons to do the job, but it's far easier for it to get rid of the two outer electrons and then call it a day. In that case, once it loses the two electrons, we now have 12 protons versus 10 electrons. Who's winning? Protons. By how much? Two. So when magnesium loses two electrons, it will have a net charge of positive two. We can write that down as mg with a small two written above the cap. Positive ions are known as cations. You want a cheesy memory, eh? Cats are positive. It's okay to laugh. A neutral nitrogen will have seven protons and seven neutrons. With five valence electrons, it is far easier to find three more electron buddies than to get rid of five. By the time the nitrogen has found its extra electron friends, it will have seven protons versus 10 electrons, or a net charge of negative three. We can write that as capital N and a small negative three written in superscript. Negative ions are known as anions. So we can either use logic to slowly find the charge of an atom, or we can use other shortcuts found on the periodic table. Ready for it? Since every alkali metal has one valence electron, which is going to lose, every element in the first group will have a charge of plus one. Each element to the right will lose even more electrons, so all alkaline earth metals will have a charge of plus two. We skip the void in the middle and continue with plus three and plus four. Plus five won't likely exist, as it is easier to find three extra electrons than to get rid of five. As you may recall, Inert gases are non-reactive. Remember rule number one, an atom is stable when its valence shell is full. Helium has its shell filled with a maximum of two electrons. Neon is filled with a maximum of eight, argon is maxed out, and the same goes with the rest of them in this column. So the last column automatically has a charge of zero. The halogens all have seven out of the eight valence electrons, and it will powerfully take a spare electron from anywhere to become stable. That's why halogens all have a charge of negative one. Do you start to see a pattern here? In general, with cations, count across from the left, starting with a charge of plus one, and with anions, count backwards from the right, starting with a charge of zero. Let's do some quick examples. Helium is in the last column, so it has a charge of zero. Lithium is in the first column, so it has a charge of plus one. Magnesium is in the second column, so it has a charge of plus two. Fluorine is second from the right, and remember the last column is zero, so the second last column is minus one. Sulfur is in the third last column, so it has a charge of negative two. Bromine is in the same column as fluorine, so it too has a charge of minus one. Okay, I think we're ready for the super shortcut rule. The shortcut is often called the crossover rule, where you cross over the absolute value of the ionic charges between the two elements, and place the positive charge value down below as a quantity. Remember that a two to two is the same as a one to one, so reduce the ratio if necessary. Let's reuse the last chapter's examples, starting with sodium and chlorine. First, we take a quick peek at the periodic table and see that sodium has a charge of plus one and chlorine being in the second last column, remember the last column is zero, so the second last column is negative one. Normally you would do this first step mentally, but I'll show you visually what is happening here. The second step is to write down the symbols of the two elements. Step three is to cross over the absolute value of the number down to the baseline. Absolute value means to write down just the number and ignore any minus signs. So far, we have Na1, Cl1, and just like in math class, it's not necessary to write down the number one. The fact that you wrote down Na already tells the reader that you have at least one sodium. The same is true with chlorine. So the final formula is NaCl. Wasn't that super fast and easy? 
With enough practice, you can quickly write down the final answer, NACL, without drawing any arrows. Let's practice through the last two examples from our previous video. Aluminum plus fluorine. Aluminum has a charge of plus 3, and fluorine has a charge of minus 1. The symbol for aluminum is AL, and fluorine is F. If you aren't sure which element should be in front, just remember an ion compound is always written as a metal followed by a nonmetal. Next, we cross over the numbers 3 and 1. Since 1 is already implied by writing down AL, we can erase the number 1, and our final answer is ALF3. One last example, magnesium plus nitrogen. Magnesium has a charge of plus 2, and nitrogen has a charge of minus 3. We write down the symbols Mg and N, then cross over the positive values of 2 and 3. We end up with Mg3 N2, and that's the final answer. Remember, don't write down any minus signs, and all the numbers should be written in subscript to indicate quantity. If we want to bake a magnesium nitride cake, we need three parts magnesium and two parts nitrogen. If we accidentally transfer down the minus sign, that would mean that we would need negative three magnesiums and positive two nitrogens. Where in the grocery store can you find negative three magnesiums? One more thing to consider. If you draw the Lewis dot diagram of aluminum bonding with nitrogen, you will notice that aluminum has three electrons to give away, and nitrogen coincidentally needs three electrons, and you get the chemical formula ALN, one aluminum and one nitrogen. However, if you solve this problem using the crossover rule, you might hastily end up with the answer AL3N3. Remember that atoms are impossible to count individually, so we're more concerned about mixing ratios. So a 3 to 3 ratio will reduce down to a 1 to 1 ratio. There's a full page of practice problems, link is in the description box below, so work on every problem and make sure that you check your answers with the answer key. Also correct any mistakes you might have made. Have fun!